Good morning. morning. Welcome back to the morning show on the Big Updates Television. I am Madonna Kambi. Uh, we have on the line uh, Senior Superintendent Rodel Kirk this morning as we address the situation of crime on the island of Tobago, uh, particularly the recent incident that took place yesterday evening. Good morning, Mr. Kirk, and welcome. Hi, good morning, Adana, and thanks for having me this morning. Right, so here we are again, you know, reports of another incident taking place there yesterday evening. And of course, we have had conversations, we spoke about strategies, we spoke about all the agencies who are working together. But here we are again, another situation, gun violence, and one fatality reported so far. Let's talk about it. Yes, good morning again. And first and foremost, I would like to extend my deepest and sincerest condolences to the family of um, Colonel Thomas. He was the person who was fatally shot last night. Um, again, this is something that we have seen emerging in Tobago, and we recognize that it's directly linked to gang activities, notwithstanding that the deceased may not have been involved in any gang activities. However, the, we recognize that the level of association among the youths, yes, we grew up with people on the street, et cetera. Um, but these, that area is an area where young people normally gather uh, because you know um, it is known, it is public information that there is a block in that area. I'm not, I, I don't know the activity at the point in time, whether he was with the, he was lining on the block or he was passing, but the information is that the youths were gathered when a car passed by, men alighted and fired. And we recognize, if you look at the pattern, it is the same throughout. It mm -hmm. seems like individuals are directly targeted and as sought. And these, these, you know, it, it, it's a rivalry. So what I am doing is the, the community have to play their role in this thing and not leave it entirely up to the police because whilst we were out we were out and and people will tell you that the response was quick the vehicle used in that incident was also recovered within a short space of time but again persons have to be vigilant in the area you have to also police your own space because we know what is happening. We have resources on the ground. We have resources moving about. And the thing about it, again, the police cannot be everywhere at every time. So we highly depend upon members of the community to partner, to play a role in terms of when you see something, say something. And it will, it will shorten the time that we respond because we will have some sort of surveillance in respect of what is happening. And this is the problem in Tobago, notwithstanding that other serious crimes are not of significant proportion. The shooting and wounding is what troubles us. Because as you realize, when these persons pull up and shoot, they don't care. They may be targeting one person and innocent persons who are wrong would also, you, you know, be affected. And this is something that because, okay, we recognize also that that the, there are nearby vehicles that were hit. So th that is why it's so concerning to me. Now, it may seem like the police is not doing anything, but I want to, to, to rest assured, tell the, the police are doing a lot. But again, we realize that we can't even pinpoint where a hotspot is in Tobago now, because anywhere you see these little blocks that these, these um, young fellas move to, that is the intended target and notwithstanding that the police are always out there and we that's, the thing, time that's the thing senior soup um you're saying that the police is working and people might be thinking the police isn't doing anything and uh, the court of public opinion will say that because remember what we will go on we don't have the intel that you have the public doesn't have the intel that you have the public doesn't know what is happening and while i know you have to keep some things um you know off the record because i mean obviously you don't want um the criminals to know where you are attacking from the public wants to see action and the public is saying that everything is reactive rather than proactive you know so this this incident took place and of course obviously there might be some type of reprisal 
what is happening there that is what we're looking forward to know what is happening there and is that going to be is the intel coming in as strategies being put in place because at the end of the day it really is something is happening and then we're reacting so we want to know that there is something happening in the background that um is going to appro attack this situation before it happens well again again what i'm telling you yes we have intelligence yes we have information but again i want to beg to differ that we are reactive we have put a lot of proactive measures in place we we have increased our visibility we have been based on the data that we have we have been using it in terms of deploying our opportunities strategically but again as you, you see when we focus on on some areas these incidents are migrating to other areas and this is something that that is why we, we again we have been getting some cooperation from members of the public but we need more we do need you think, more Mr. Kerr, i don't need to cut you off but do you think that the legislation needs to be changed so that we can have a more radical approach to dealing with this crime situation <laughs> well I, I i don't know because laws are one thing because what we will have even so we have laws laws only apply when the person go contrary to what it is but we can't tell somebody not to break the law you understand what i'm saying but i think that i don't want to go on that tread on that 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 aspect my my responsibility is to try to make every space safe my responsibility is to prevent and to detect right we have put preventative measures in place we are dealing with our, our um, capacity in terms of our detection. But the thing is, as I, I'm saying, we, we also have a lot of challenges, which I would not mention here. We have challenges, but notwithstanding that, notwithstanding that, a lot could be done with cooperation of all stakeholders. And we keep coming on the air and we keep saying that people have to be mindful about what is happening around you. Because what is happening is not something that will just come overnight and happen. It is there in our face, tearing us in our face. When we, the police, sometimes go and take action, you will have all the negative response. No matter what you try, you will see all the negative response from persons within the same community. And when it does happen, the police ain't doing nothing, and the police ain't doing nothing, and, and the place too small, and this and that and that. The place too small. And that is what people are saying. But what solutions are people uh, recommending or suggesting in their own space when they see the activities taking place right outside the home? Some people report that they're living in fear. The activities might be taking place right outside their home, but they're living in fear. And so I, I really, some, some sort of confidence has to be... You, you can't allow it to reach on your doorstep, so even self, you're living in fear. And, and the thing about it, take for example, when these incidents happen, the amount of persons you will see come and gather around and want to walk through and want to do this and want to do that, you will be surprised about the same people who say they're living in fear. Now, yes, it's a reality, the fear of crime, but I'm saying there's so much mechanism in which these that information could be passed on when these things are happening. So much mechanism that we come out here and we, 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 we educate and edify people about. And they are still not utilizing it. Again, who would you trust? If you are saying you can't trust nobody in the police, who would you trust? And that is something that we have to work on in the Tobago space because we were not like this. We have never seen this. And as we are the one have to fix it. You can't leave it up to me, Mr. Kirk alone, or the police in the Tobago space alone. All of us in the Tobago space should police our space. And that is all I'm saying that we need to, to adopt a different mindset and stop tolerating criminal activities around you. That is all I'm saying. Uh, Mr. Right? Kirk, we are happy that you came on this morning to, you know, to, to address this situation. And what we want to see is the action. I know you, uh, is a lot of work. As you mentioned, the TTPS cannot do it alone. And I'm hoping that all the agencies who are responsible are collaborating. And I do hope that communities are coming forward with the information. What we want to see is feet on the ground and we want to see action. Radical action taking place because Tobago, as you said, it's too small. Yes, it's too small. And we really want to get to the root of this and eradicate. Being a part of a gang is an illegal practice and so 
do the thing and get rid of them and you know do what needs to be done at the level of the ttps and all the agencies who are responsible for protecting and serving the island of tobago and trinidad and tobago by extension in closing is there anything you'd like to share with us before we go one comment i i like the suggestion that you spoke about radical action but i hope do hope when the police is out there doing what they are they are um, empowered to do i hope that i don't get the pushback from the same people who are calling for radical action when they are inconvenience because you know often there is always say hey, the police doing this while they're going to put it this we have to start with the small thing and we will be doing that we have been doing it notwithstanding that you feel that nothing is happening but again all these people are using and, you, and again you will see that they are using the motor vehicles to get from point a to point b again you will see that and when the police and all the other law enforcement agencies come to do all that they need to do you you see what you, you see the negative comments that you are getting a matter of fact even on social media platform when i spoke the last time on your program threats were even leveled against me by saying what we are about to do and why we are doing it so again i'm saying i hope the persons or, or, or the people within the Tobago space, you know, understand when we actually go out there and we start to adopt that zero tolerance approach to everything. Do I, I, I'm just urging the people, if it is that you want that level of activity, you must be willing to sacrifice and the inconvenience that may come upon you. So that is, you know, that is my um, take. And again, I want to thank the Tobago public I want you to urge you to continue to support us in the fight against this crime. We are all living in this space and we must protect our space. So thank you for having me this morning. All right, thank you, the Senior Superintendent Rodil Kirk, bringing his um, updates as to the crime situation here on the island of Tobago and the most recent incident taking place there last night. This is where we have to end the morning show uh, today, but we don't end our programming. We continue on with GMT, so we ask that you stay with us. And as you stay with us, we invite you to help us. Share the live, share the live, share the live. Stay safe.